Today, we're making a simple beer and mead brew. Let's get started. So we're making a braggot. A braggot is a beer and mead hybrid that's super fun. This brew is gonna be about 5% and super crushable. We are using the recipe on screen and we're doing an all grain brew. This is my first time doing an all grain brew and I'm really excited to try it. My friend owns an Anvil brewing system, so I went over on a Saturday morning for a fun brew day. After we had all of our ingredients, we started by getting our water up to about 149 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we added our grains. Our grains went through the mash process for about an hour. I'm not very good at all grain yet, so rather than brewing to efficiency, I just followed the instructions from the guy at the brew shop. I was able to figure out the starting gravity or bricks of my wart while I was mashing via my digital refractometer from HANA Instruments. Basically, I put a small drop of my wart on the refractometer and I figured out that I had a starting bricks of five without the honey. That would translate to roughly about 1.020 starting gravity. I really should have let those grains mash for longer so we could have reached 1.029 starting gravity. After we mashed our grains, we went ahead and went through the sparging process. This is a shortened clip of it, but basically we ran water through the grains to get the good stuff out. We then moved the grains out and we started our hop additions. We got it up to a boil and then we boiled that first ounce of hops for one hour. We then boiled another ounce of hops for 15 minutes and the last ounce of hops came after flame out when it stopped boiling. At that last five minutes, we added both our hops and honey to this brew. We added the honey at this point so we could hopefully keep the nice aromatics from that honey. It was time to cool down the wort, so we took it outside and we used our wort chiller to bring it down to room temp. We had a fun guest watching and helping us in our chill time, as you can see. After it was chilled, I took another reading with the refractometer and found that the starting bricks was 12.1. That translates roughly to about 1.049 starting gravity. This braggot won't finish at 1.000, so we will have a little bit of residual sweetness. This digital refractometer is super nice for beer brewing. We're able to get quick and accurate bricks readings while making the beer. It would have been really helpful to use if I was brewing to efficiency. This means brewing to get up to a starting gravity or bricks instead of a specific time. You can find a link to pick up one of these things below. I also did take a specific gravity reading just for giggles. The starting gravity was 1.049. We then moved it into a new container and took it home. Once it was at my house, it started fermenting. It took about 10 days to finish fermenting and I noticed the yeast had started to flocculate out to the bottom. I ended up taking a gravity reading with my digital refractometer and throwing that reading into a calculator. Due to the presence of alcohol, bricks readings post fermentation are tough. You have to use a specific calculator to figure out your final ABV. After throwing my numbers into the calculator, I found that my final bricks was 6.5, which puts us at roughly about a 4.8% brew. You can also use a hydrometer reading to figure out your final gravity. It was now time to go ahead and keg this. We racked it into a keg and hooked it up to our keyser. It sat at 30 PSI for three days and it was ready to go. You can absolutely bottle carbonate this recipe by using priming sugar and a specific calculator for that. If you add the right amount of priming sugar and then bottle it, you will have carbonated bottles of this brew. So now it's time for a tasting. Let's do it. All right, here we are for the finale and the tasting. I'm super excited to do this. I have a pretty experimental recipe here. Um, I've never made this before, so it's the first time, but um, I went ahead and got a pour of it from my keg, and many of you might have a kegging operation. You can also, let's say if you don't have a kegging ability, you can use priming sugar to bottle carbonate. I'm, I just have the kegging ability. So let's go ahead and take a quick taste of this thing. It is carbonated. You can see the bubbles coming from the bottom. It looks good. Yeah, there, there's a lot of maltiness from the wheats we used. The honey malt, I think, is helpful to pronounce that honey character, but there is still some floral honey presence, which is nice. We're only about uh, three and a half weeks, four weeks since we made this thing, so it's been a little bit, giving it some time. Most of the time, beers, braggots, in this case, 
can turn around pretty quick. I think it's pretty dang good. I'm trying to think what I would change. Part of me wonders if I had a little bit of a tinge of like acidity or maybe some, it reminds me a little bit of like a, a blue moon. I, you know, with blue moon, often you will put a orange slice in there. This might be really good with a orange slice on there. Um, I don't have one right now to try it, but I think for an experimental recipe, for something I've never done before, then this is pretty good. Um, I don't, I still just don't know what I would mess around with, what I would tweak. Maybe a different honey malts, maybe a different hop. Maybe there's a um, more fruity hop that might work better in this. I'm still experimenting in the beer realm. This is my first, uh, on the channel, first all grain batch. And so, um, and, and all the equipment you saw, uh, the, you know, ferment, not fermenter, but the anvil system that I used was not my own, it was my friend's. And uh, so I might invest in that in the future. It's just really nice to be able to do it. But I think this thing has turned around and turned out to be pretty good. Maybe just a fruitier hop. Maybe that's what we go for. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. My first time doing this. Again, it's experimental. I'm gonna put the recipe up, but I'm not gonna say that it's a perfect recipe. I'm sure that there's variations, hop changes, wheat changes, honey changes, stuff like that, e even yeast that would really um, make this better. But as I have it right here, I think it's pretty good. Uh, if you like any of the equipment, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. If you are looking to buy equipment for brewing, I'm gonna stick a bunch of Amazon links below. And there's also links to like the, um, I used a refractometer. I used a couple different things here. I use like a digital refractometer. Uh, this is from Hannah Instruments. I'm actually partnering with them. And so I have an affiliate code kind of thing. If you use my code um, on their website, it will help you out. So you can use that for this thing and some others. But I've had a lot of fun. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think below. What you would change if you're a beer person and you've done a lot of beer, what would you change for this recipe just based off of looking at the ingredients? Because I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I'm pretty good at making mead. I'm still learning how to make good beer and good braggots. So I hope to see you in the future. Cheers.